So implosion type bombs are much more efficient. These are the ones where you're crushing the stuff down to a uh, much higher density. So this is a mock-up of an early version of the Fat Man design. It's not the final Fat Man design. You'll see there's a fairly large ball here. The actual plutonium is uh, a, a tiny ball inside that large ball. This is all the sort of reflector and tamper kinds of stuff uh, that's there. And then you have this series of explosive lenses around it that each have to be detonated at exactly the same time. Because what you want is a spherical shock wave uh, from the explosion that's going in and crushing this little ball. If you have, if for example, and this shock wave is going at the speed of sound in a not very big object. So if you're even a couple of milliseconds off on your timing, then one of these chunks of shock wave is going to get there way ahead of the other chunk of shock wave. And instead of having a crushed ball, you're going to have a flattened pancake and your neutrons will be flying off into the surrounding countryside rather than causing a explosive chain reaction. Everybody following me so far? Okay. So this is, this kind of thing is significantly trickier to do because you need to have the explosive lenses, you need to have the um, uh, precise timing, and so on. Um, it would be substantially uh, more difficult for terrorists to pull something like this off than something like a, uh, a gun-type bomb with highly enriched uranium. But uh, there have been repeated government studies that have concluded that it is still conceivable, particularly if they got um, knowledgeable help. And there are ways to do it that are, uh, I can't say much, but that are less complicated than the Nagasaki bomb uh, was. Um, uh, so, uh, is there any sort of shield in this configuration? What? Is there any sort of shield in this configuration? What do you mean by a shield? The, the surrounding... Right, so this ball has only sort of this much plutonium in it, and all of the rest of this is the neutron reflector and tamper and so on. I should mention also that this is the only, only type where you can get a substantial yield out of plutonium. If you are trying to do a gun-type bomb with plutonium, it turns out, and this was only discovered as they were well on their way in the Manhattan Project, turns out plutonium uh, has a lot more neutrons just naturally there all the time. And particularly, the, the, when, you, when you make plutonium, uh, as uh, we'll hear in a week or so, what you're doing basically is you're irradiating uranium-238 in a reactor, and it absorbs a neutron and it turns into plutonium-239. Uh, but then if you leave it in a little bit longer, some of it's going to turn into plutonium-240, and you just can't avoid having some plutonium-240, and plutonium-240 falls apart all the time. And so you end up with a lot of neutrons flying around, and so in your gun-type device, the uh, the plutonium starts reacting as soon as the two pieces are critical, long before they're, you know, super critical enough to really get you a good yield. And so you basically can't do, uh, you know, you could do a gun-type device with plutonium that would take out this building, but you couldn't do a gun-type device with plutonium that would take out, you know, the heart of a major city uh, in the way that you could with highly enriched uranium. So if, if what you've got is plutonium, or if what you've got is not enough highly enriched uranium to make a gun type device, then you have to try to go for the greater difficulty uh, but also greater efficiency of the implosion type device. Yeah? Um, if you wanted to use it for um, the sake of energy, wouldn't the plutonium gun type be more efficient? Uh, energy is a totally different story. Uh, and actually, let me go over to the chart to explain uh, a little bit about uh, energy. Uh, so. Uh, none of this is a good idea for energy because it blows everything apart. What you want to do is, for energy is you want to have a reaction that is just critical. So the, the neutron multiplication that you get is exactly one. That is, you get one more neutron for every neutron released in a fission reaction so that the reaction is neither growing nor declining. Okay? So it turns out there's another way that I can increase uh, the um, chance that one of these neutrons is going to split an atom. And it's crucial for reactors and not usable at all for nuclear bombs. And that way is to, I'm going to just draw it as water, 
So let's suppose I immersed my thing in water. Then there are a bunch of water atoms, uh, water molecules in here, which are hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And some of these neutrons are going to bounce on those and they're going to slow down. Now, one of the amazing things, to me anyway, about these nuclear reactions is it turns out it's a lot easier to split an atom with a slow, neutron that's only moving slowly than it is with a neutron that's moving really fast. You would think it would be the opposite. You know, if it's moving really fast, boy, it's going to give that atom a good whack and that atom will really split. But it turns out if it's moving really fast, then it's going to go sailing by these atoms most of the time. Whereas if it's moving really slowly, then the nuclear force in the atoms can deflect it and pull it in and cause it to split the atom. So you have a much better chance uh, if... Uh, so this is why in a nuclear reactor you might use only, for example, 4% enriched uranium as opposed to 90% enriched uranium because your water, which is what you use in most nuclear reactors, not all, there's other things you can use to slow down the neutrons, um, your water is slowing them down enough that it's much easier for the atoms to catch them uh, and, and be split by them, and so you don't need as many of the fissile atoms around uh, to make your reactors go. You can have a lot of the non-fissile atoms, the uranium-238, that then is building up plutonium. That's why there ends up being plutonium in the spent fuel from every uh, commercial uh, nuclear power plant. But the thing is, once these, this bouncing around and the the, the slowing down that, that occurs from the neutrons makes it too slow for an explosive chain reaction to take place. Um, so you can't really get a, a big explosive yield out of this kind of a system where the neutrons are moving slowly. This is, this, the, the thing that slows down the neutrons is called a moderator. Okay? And in most current nuclear reactors, the water is both a moderator and a coolant. So it's, it's taking away all that energy and then sending it off. It's turning into steam and driving a turbine, which is the point of running the reactor. Okay, anyway, thanks for asking that question about energy so I could make that point that I had. But the yeah. fundamental idea about the implosion type and the gun type bombs is the same, is to create supercritical mass, right? Right, right. It's, 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 more it's two efficient. different ways of getting the material together fast enough that you get a nice explosive yield before it all blows itself apart. Uh, and this one more efficient than the other. Now, let's talk for a moment about fusion weapons. 